beard. Welcome back to The Sip, everybody. This is a free episode of our Patreon-exclusive show. As always, I'm your first favorite bartender, third favorite author, Josh Price. And I am joined here by the greatest co-host and the master of the mix, Greg and Shost. Very nice of you to say, Josh. <laughs> Thank it's you. all a lie. It's all a lie. I know. It's all for, for posture. We, we hate each other off camera. beats me. <laughs> oh, good to be back on this show. Yes. Yeah, this is the show where we talk about anything and everything that we want to talk about. We just kind of free ball it left and right. Mm. I wear my whitey tighties tonight, Josh. <laughs> so, I got my bulletproof kimono on. <laughs> <laughs> under this, under really this sweatshirt. Rain, a range it's, of powers there. Oh, my goodness. There's more more on that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all things ninja. But, uh, yeah, before we get to the ninjas Ooh. and the bullets, well, I guess we're going to start with bullets in a way. Yeah. Um, you, guys, you guys know I like to start this show with a little bit of history, and usually goofy history. Yeah. So I've been kind of on a on a on a Cold War kick lately. I'm <laughs> okay. um, not Cold War kids. Cold War kick. Mm-hmm. Patent pending. Um, and I came across the story of the U two spy plane. Now, before you ask, no, it was not piloted by Bono and the Edge. <laughs> although it would have been really cool to send the Edge to the Edge. Oh no! Josh. <laughs> it's oh no! That was, <laughs> that was the worst joke ever. Hey man, hey, I. Yeah, it was, you know, I'm a dad miss, now. I'm allowed to make a those bomb. jokes. Hey, you <laughs> dropped a bomb. Right? <laughs> you, know, just, uh, you miss, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? So Yeah, yeah well, I, I miss all, 100%, 100% of those, too. <laughs> that one. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> no. Sorry, no, Bono. I'm, uh, I am funny, damn it. Bono. But, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so I'd like you to transport yourself back to 1945. <laughs> and the... Uh, the Second World War has just ended, and the United States is bound and determined not to get caught with their pants down again like they were at Pearl Harbor. So they started looking into different forms of, of espionage using the, the new technology that they had. Not the nuclear bomb, the other new technology. Um, and they started looking into high-altitude planes, which... The the average plane, like the the Russian MiG twelve, which was like the fighter plane at the time, went to about forty five thousand feet above uh, above the ground, and they were looking for something that could be high enough that it was out of range from MiG twelve and theoretically invisible. Uh, uh, spoiler: it was not invisible. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> so we got a invisible plane. That's supposed to, supposed to be an, an invisible plane. It's not mm-hmm. invisible mm-hmm. from Russia. The, is an American plane that's American. supposed to be spying on Russia. Ah, okay. Primarily on Russia. Okay. Because, right. I mean, this is a time period where uh, after the peace accords were drawn up, Russia started getting all, like, sus and and Jeez. spying on everybody else. So if you imagine all the meetings between Stalin and <laughs> Churchill and... and right. Yeah, our, well, like, <laughs> it wouldn't have been Roosevelt at that point, but uh, our government um, would have been, hey, we've been working on this thing. And Russia would have been like, Oh yeah, we saw that. I mean, really? Mm-hmm. Like they were they were feigning surprise. Right, quite a bit. right, right, right. So, so this the U.S. Is, this needs is to the catch Lockheed, up. right? Yes, the Lockheed, yes, the Lockheed plane. It's funny, you, you know. I just pulled up U two <laughs> spy plane, nineteen forty five, and the first like dozen of them here say U two spy incident. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now that's go on further. Here we go. <laughs> And the I incident. see you two dude in a space spy plane incident. <laughs> All right. I'm so curious. that is I'm where we're going to be going, okay. but we gotta we gotta lay the groundwork All here. Right. We gotta All we gotta right. start in the basement. So uh, for the next ten years, the U.S. is is uh, commissioning different different airplane companies to develop a plane that'll go that high. And Lockheed was actually not invited to the party. They just submitted a design because they felt left out. Okay. So that winds up being the design that the US goes with partially for budgetary reasons and partially because the other the other companies were just not pulling it off. And one of the one of the benefits mm. for the Lockheed plane was this plane is a bare bones aircraft. Yeah. There is no landing gear on the U2 spy plane. They um, uh, the the pilots uh, uh refer to landing as controlled crashes. So when this plane comes <laughs> down, we're not even talking about it being in the air anymore. We're talking about when this plane comes down they have another pilot get in a car. So this plane is flying close to the ground. He gets in the car, and he's driving behind the plane, 
telling him how high he is off the ground and telling him to like slowly ease it off. And then when they come down, they just like skid through stuff. There's there are like wheels there, but they're not intended to hold the plane up. They're just there. So, OSHA. So they, they just, skid just, through a stop, OSHA's and then the good. plane We're just good. like leans to one side and smacks a wing on the ground. And all that right. is how this plane is designed to land. That's fine. They're like, let's spend all day <laughs> sinking. We're then. incognito in the air. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm assuming they can be seen the whole time. And then they're like, let's just go land covertly over yep. in this region. Just crash. Hey, who's, got, who's, got, who's got a mark on their record? You're, you're the best pilot <laughs> for this job. Jesus, what the hell? You, yeah. you want to talk spy, but you want to talk taking down planes, and you want to let your spy plane get captured, Just crash. <laughs> well, the the other thing, the the other thing that the, like a the giant United States saw as a benefit was when this plane land or crashed. Spy not when it land, plane. not when land crashed, but when it actually crashed, it was believed. It would just blow apart because it's just held together with fuck. It's just with duct tape where's the, and where's and and, the and loose pilot bolts. In this? So the pi- <laughs> the pilots uh, were not cases. So these guys during Apparently. testing, they would like during black testing. out regularly. Nice because they're so high. Essentially, they're getting the bends when they go to land the plane. Righteous. So they're they're passing out. They're 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 suffering from from oxygen uh, in their oxygen stream. and 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 repressurization <laughs> oh my God. it's nuts they had to develop a brand new flight suit for this and it wasn't even effective so they Not designed a plane effective. to crash only basically basically so this this plane is is designed to go up in the air and take pictures so what it's pictures like, what pictures did they get what pictures <laughs> they got, they they get? got pictures of a lot the the u2 spy plane is how they found out that russia was working on a space program it's 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 how they discovered that mm. um so yeah, the plane was plane was designed in fifty five, finalized in fifty five, and uh, uh, one of its first missions in nineteen fifty six. Um, to keep it a secret, once it was finished, they moved it to Area fifty one, okay. uh, which uh, come on, you know, you come know on. how around Area fifty one they claim all the alien stuff yeah. is just weather balloons. Keep that in mind for later, because the the United States government is not very uh, inventive when it comes to excuses. <laughs> Moving on from that, so this thing's got is I like a shocked. fucking like a it's like a unis it's it's actually like a bicycle exactly that it's yeah it's, like, it's two in the front and two in the back and that the, don't... like you're saying the wings mm-hmm. it's a controlled crash because it's like there's no way for the wings it's breakaway not to, like, to fall over it's breakaways it's it's designed to fall over when it when it this is a graceful ground. landing but from uh, some of the other ones I've seen it's it's, it's skids it skids. Yeah, the wing. Yeah, so a controlled crash. Anytime mm-hmm. it slows down enough to actually stop the look, the wing yeah. touches the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, is what you don't do. <laughs> right. It's but it's a spy plane, right? Yeah, so yeah. everybody, yeah. Right. let's go in there and fuck shit up and so, break so, away all of our wings. So look they at look at us fifty miles before, and we're actually our tube is sitting fifty miles in front. Yeah, of the us. pogo. So the pogo the, in that video, they're talking about the pogo wheels. The pogo wheels are only there for takeoff, so that the plane's wings aren't on the ground. So it's there to prop it up and and keep it go, keep it level as it takes off. So it's amazing. The next <laughs> the next thing amazing. that really made me laugh was <laughs> the Russian government knew about the U two from day one. Yeah, they they weren't like they didn't have pictures or proof. They didn't they need spies for that. They just no, saw they it. Just they just looked up. <laughs> so the U two is not invisible to radar, <laughs> and they're not flying at a range where they're above or below radar. So the Russians saw them coming the whole way. They just they couldn't shoot them. So pilots pilots would report that while they were taking pictures, they they could see the they could see the military down below scrambling to try and shoot them out of the sky, and they were just barely too high. How, are they, to how did they see out. us? <laughs> hey, how the hell do they? <laughs> so the spy plane, but just because they because they're out of uh, right service just, to air missiles, just because there were spies on the on the plane. <laughs> on the That's plane. the only yeah. And they had to, and they dig through, the, on the dig through the wilderness after they crashed their plane. Basically, not basically, that, that was wow. or they didn't expect the the pilots to survive. <laughs> like these these pilots <laughs> were nuts. <laughs> Fuck us. Nice <laughs> job. Were nuts. They were. It's basically like we're going to give you a parachute, but we really don't expect to see you again right, if you yeah. crash. So, <laughs> U.S. for the next uh, uh, three and a half years is running missions over Russia and Germany and a little bit in the Middle East. And Russia's like, hey, we we know there's somebody in our airspace, and we're pretty sure it's you American idiots, uh, but we can't prove it. And the whole time, the U.S. government, at this point, is Dwight Eisenhower. He's going, like, eh. 
we don't have any military planes in your <laughs> right. airspace, which technically they didn't, because they, the CIA owned the U-2 at the time. Oh. So it's not a military operation. That's why uh, it was a smart plan. Cheeky <laughs> bastards. So, so they're, they're running these missions, and this guy, who I think it was 22 or 27 missions, he's, he's the most successful U-2 pilot, uh, just because he was the one who blacked out the least. Yes. He was able to get yes. up in the air that many times. He... Yes. It was uh, Operation Home Run. It it was it was uh, out at first. Should have been Operation Out at first, because this the, the this mission was on first. This mission was <laughs> infield fly. Infield fly. This oh, yeah. mi- this particular mission, Oper- Operation Home Run, Sounds was supposed to be the fly, first sorry. cross uh, Soviet uh, spy mission. Okay. It was a, it was a nine hour flight. Where he's t- he's flying all the way across Russia and just taking pictures of everything. First time they've done that. First time they've gone that deep into uh, Soviet airspace, and uh, <laughs> didn't go well. So the Russian government is not making a secret out of the fact that they are ma- they are updating their 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 MiG their MiG fighter planes, and they're updating their rocketry. U.S. is like. We're totally going to be fine. There's no way they can reach us. We have uh, this airplane, aircraft that's completely <laughs> undetectable. It's invisible. Yeah, they can't even it. see it when they look up. So uh, they, they hear it when we land every time, though. As <laughs> soon as this U-2 crosses into, into Soviet Cities airspace, die. the Soviet military starts firing rockets. And the pilot's like, hey, these guys are getting kind of close. <laughs> But my wings detached. U.S. <laughs> U.S. government's like, you're fine, dude. You're totally fine. Rockets are passing him. He's like, I think they can reach me. They're like, no, no, finish the mission. You're totally gonna be fine. Well, uh, a, a, a uh, missile. Let me guess. Detonates behind the plane. Yes. And he wrecks. He parachutes out, and the plane crashes. The government, at this point, knows that he's gone down, but they think the pilot has died, and they think that the plane has fallen apart. Well, this particular U-2 was put together with more than duct tape. Oh. So the, the Soviet government, Khrushchev, has the whole plane uh, and has the all right, pilot. All right, all right, all right, all right. So this dumbass biplane idea didn't work since the get. We were already ripping it to mm-hmm. shreds. Mm-hmm. It dives down into Russian territory. Yeah. And they deny having it. Mm-hmm. America denies having said plane mm-hmm. in Russian territory. And they're like, hey, man, the VIN matches the model. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, that's where we're at. So kind of. So the Soviets tight lip immediately. And, and they're, right. so they're, they're, they don't, don't show you, they don't, don't show, they don't don't show, show the you cards. Your cards right away. Right, they right. just ask about it. Like, hey, did, did you have a plane in our airspace? And Eisenhower, uh, you know, <laughs> swinging hard, goes, uh, oh my God. We, uh, yeah, we had a weather plane flying around. Mm. What a weather plane. Oh, don't think twice. Yeah, no. We're just checking, just the, checking junk the weather. It, junk the, it. the biometrics. Of and the, then you know, Russia, mm-hmm. with their mm-hmm. hands behind their back, go, really? Because we have this plane, all this footage, and a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's ready to give you <laughs> And up. Eisenhower, still, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it was a, I, I, I don't see a pilot. I don't see a plane. Like, it's in front of you. Like, they took this to the UN. <laughs> like, we have all oh, of this stuff. Oh, my goodness, yeah. And Eisenhower. That's that's. that's yeah, we may have had a pilot. We we may have been uh, spying on you since World War II. Uh, we Spot on. may be committing war crimes. <laughs> and Khrushchev calls off some. I forget. It, it was it was a meeting about uh, this the division of 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 Germany, so East and West Germany. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was supposed to be like, hey, we're going to start coming together and 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 really laying off this Cold War thing. Khrushchev is just like, I'll see you in hell. And builds the bird on the wall. Oh my god! <laughs> because of the U two spy plane. So uh, this guy is is it does have a happy ending in a in a way because uh, they kept this this pilot alive. And uh, several years down the road, the the two superpowers traded hostages so that we got the pilot and another I think a journalist back, mm-hmm. and we gave them one of their spies. Which if you <laughs> if you look. If you look at the images of the spy that we sent back to Russia, I get why he was a spy. He looks he, – he's just a nerdy old dude. I would not peg him for a spy <laughs> ever. Because well, he's supposed to die in the car, in the plane crash. Well, no, no the, the, the guy that we're getting uh, back. Oh, so I when see, you when when you when you, when you, re, when you look up the 1960 U-2 spy story. plane incident, the guy that we gave back after that <laughs> is just some nerdy Russian dude who, who – 
like there's a yeah, milk yeah. farmer. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> sitting on Siberia. Like, yeah, we got, we got your guy here. But the guy we got back looks like an astronaut. This guy. That's, that, that's right. the guy we yeah. got back. Yeah. Gary Powers. They're, they're, yes. I'm yes. trying to find the other guy, but it's, <laughs> yeah. I should so, <laughs> I should have brought a picture of him because I was laughing my butt. I'm sitting there making lunch, like watching this happen. It's <laughs> like I know I'm supposed to be serious about this because this is more or less what Bridge of Spies is based on. This kind of thing, and I'm laughing because it's like we gave him. We gave him a spy plane and a nerd, and we got an astronaut back. Yeah, you know, and a this, college this, kid. This completely reminds me of how Steven Seagal lives his life. <laughs> I was gonna say it only. <laughs> I was gonna say brave stuff because it only gets more serious from here. Isn't there a movie where like he's he's trying to board a plane, a, a fighter, a jet or something while it's in the air, hmm. and he Maybe. gets he gets like sucked off into nowhere. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's. I'm pretty sure it's. Uh, it might not be Area 51. Or not? I'm sorry. Uh, what's the name of the the plane? The president? I'm sorry. Air, oh, uh, Air Force One. Air Force One. It. it mm. I was thinking it's, Broken Arrow dies, for some reason. It's not Broken Arrow, but he dies in the. I know what you're saying. He dies he in just, the like, first yeah. five minutes of it. It's immediate. It's like Drew Barrymore and Scream. <laughs> so it really is because he's he starts out on the plane mm-hmm. with the team. Yeah. He's the leader yeah. for the team. They infiltrate like through like mm-hmm. their fuel system and oh shit. Oh my god! I'm pretty sure. And it's, he just it's Air he, Force One. in order to like save the guy he's with, he shoves that guy into the plane, and then he gets he gets blown away That's instantly. Nuts. Immediately, That's it's nuts. the very beginning of the movie. Oh my. god. Well, now he's doing well for himself, I guess. He's like started his own like, you know, kimono bulletproof <laughs> entrepreneur. I, there's like there's word on the street that he like designed his own kimono bulletproof jacket, and he was like invested in this mm-hmm. company. At, okay, you know, just a beautiful American spy cinema. He was like, a, <laughs> see, I've he was, I've, like, heard, a sheriff, I've heard about he, like, I've a heard bulletproof about bulletproof company. Yeah. He's got a he's got a record out like a blues yeah the record. blues album yeah yeah blues album. <laughs> But he's like the, so he like got with these this guy. I think the, the name of the company is like Caballero. Okay. To like design these like sleek, elegant, like dusters. Like, real, not, like you know what I mean? They're like real overcoats quick, though, and stuff. Real quick, because Josh is gonna have to throw these clips in. It's executive decision. <laughs> executive decision. <laughs> yes, this is the scene. It's executive this is the decision. Scene. Goodbye. <laughs> Must because because he's so aerodynamic. Well, you don't expect hair. Steven, Steven Seagal po- to yeah, yeah. die at all. The, the hair tie back and the ponytail makes him so aerodynamic. I think he thought. I think he does know the YouTube plane I think his because name is, when he when he when he the plane, Lizamo? I think yeah. he was trying to do a controlled crash. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was trying to do that. that he just holds his arms out. And he's he's going down like this. His his, his face is named Steven. His his pony is named Seagal. Seagal. You know, dude, see sure. they got the stealth. You see that shit, dude? Look with the with the fuel system. Oh, man. It's fucking. That's the true that's undetectable that's plane the on radar that's a still and i'm fantastic. sure they developed that that technology after the youtube failed so yeah. substantially <laughs> i mean he's definitely you know invisible to radar yeah, yeah i mean like look at all the, all the points he's played we, we said so, <laughs> deputy or De- sheriff he's a sheriff he's a racist he's a, cop, in he's a, racist. He's a racist in his free time <laughs> he's got the it fastest all, hands it all checks man. out he's the deadliest man with a knife in the 90s how he did yeah. this one yeah. the, the, yeah. The, the tuck man he was on so, some shit. so but i mean obviously this, uh, obviously him being shot at is is a is a threat both professionally and personally <laughs> so tell me more about this damn kimono like so he's got he's got a a kimono like a bulletproof kimono he like, yeah he commissioned someone to make kimono. this I, i'm pretty sure it was that caballero company okay but they've they went on to do this but when i was young i used to hear that he, like he used to rock like bulletproof everything you mm-hmm. know? and it wasn't really feasible right but now digging into after caballero and Bulletproof clothing. It's Maybe he was. It, it, like, he's got bulletproof like, socks he's, on. He's the puts man, on every pretty morning. much. He's like, it's, he's, it just takes a little bit off everything. <laughs> Steven Seagal. Breaking noses. Steven Seagal Can... owns a bulletproof kimono. Oh, it's not a picture. I remember, th- I remember hearing about how he had this he clothing o- company. How would that yeah. even work, though? Steven Seagal owns a bulletproof <laughs> kimono. There's of... a company in, in Colombia that makes Columbia, bulletproof clothing. Columbia, Caballero. Yeah, there was an article about them in New Yorker. Maybe and it's Caballero then. On Vice Caballero. TV, and they make custom Caballero. bulletproof clothing. And one of the custom pieces was a bulletproof kimono. There you go. I need See? To... I love how the picture, though, is like, this is, this like, is, this is what he looks like in a kimono. Because it's like, this the, link way said, too much the link said this is not a joke. And I was like, <laughs> get this. <laughs> they had a firewall on the See, other it's two. not a joke, and then it is a joke right Lordy. away. Yeah. Great. Lordy. That's Sorry, fantastic. I'm, I'm glad we linked... Uh, <laughs> YouTube bombing yeah. into <laughs> Steven Seagal Steven Seagal. outerwear. Yeah, yeah. It's I great. mean, maybe it's maybe we should uh, we we should see if they're for sale. Get ourselves some bulletproof kimonos <laughs> and listen to his blues album. Maybe we should have different colors. 
<laughs> we can all get different colors. Like we could be like the 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 Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that's what he was going for. Maybe right? maybe Steven Seagal wanted to be a Power Ranger. When when I was in college, we uh I, I took Greek. Uh just as I needed a I needed a language elective, so I took Greek. And our professor was the oldest man alive. I think he may have been the first human. Um and He's the guy who made them all sweet stone. old sweet old man, but he, he turned would, them all to stone. <laughs> oh, the bus. He was the guy. He would fall asleep in the middle of his lecture every single class. Three times a week I took Greek, and half the class was just us waiting for him to wake up That's again. pretty awesome. So <laughs> I just love that. It was, it was amazing. It was sure. amazing. Don't get me wrong. I'll sleep but with him. I'll cuddle him. When, when you leave <laughs> people like me to my own devices, I'm going to find the most ridiculous thing imaginable. And through a conversation of, of what the – Hardest class to take at our college would have been. We started looking through the catalog and we found that class 499, which was the highest class you could take undergrad, was underwater basket weaving. <laughs> you could, <laughs> it was advanced Wait. underwater basket weaving. All right. I feel right. like we left out a whole fucking segment here, to be honest with you, bud. What just well, happened? Well, Someone just came to you there? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's getting I, somewhere. I I'm going, I'm I going see, somewhere with this. Keep going, Josh. So, underwater basket weaving. Underwater basket weaving. I can so, see you're going to be great uh, my, my buddy Ben wound no, up taking the get class. Get your mind out of the gutter. And it was... <laughs> it was not that difficult, <laughs> but no, we it was it was a major <laughs> that nobody expected. Shake me. And... Apparently, I'm not the only person who looks for the craziest thing you can get a major in, because did you guys know you can get a major in a competitive meat judging? Wait. Okay, it's co-ed, like... Does this go back to the Power Ranger stripper thing? <laughs> is this like what a, is it? What do you mean a, meat judging? A, is this like a, kind of a meat? fraternity like, hazing? So you can judge <laughs> cuts of meat... In, uh, you can get a, a, a degree judging cuts of meat. Oh, like and there are deep loins. competitions. Deep loins. So there was a school. Wow. Uh, I, I think this year's competition is, is coming up as of recording this. We need to go. Uh, but last, in, in no, on November, 20, or November 30th of 2020, or November 3rd, 2020. Oh, I missed it. Uh, the, the 15th annual meat judging cont- collegiate meat judging contest occurred and some school in texas won it uh which eh, no no surprise there i mean the, the land of the of the, the longhorn you know steers yeah yeah Barbecue, steers but yeah so people. like there are schools across the country like texas omaha you u of i i think even has a so they're not judging like cooked meat they're cooking cooking are they, i'm sorry they're not judging cooked meat they're judging this Fresh meat cut off just bones. Meat. This isn't for like, like a the, rib competition. Right. right. No, it's not. This is like, this is like They're not, pri- it's not a tasting like a, test like or prime, yeah. you know, choice. All they are judging stuff. the quality of meat. A school can enter as many competition or as many competitors as it pleases. Texas Tech, one of eight schools competing, sent 22 to Fort Worth. <laughs> 22 people from Texas Tech went really to judge Really stacking the deck there. A full quarter of the Texas field, Tech but too, only four judges stuff. scored count towards the team's official total. A me judging coach's greatest challenge is identifying which combination of teenagers can what? be depended on what? in a given weekend. You never picked the right team. <laughs> Wait. You never picked the right team, Clay Bendel, judge of the 2015 Texas Tech National Champions and Red what? Raiders coach. What the hell? <laughs> says <laughs> with a sigh. What, what the hell? What am I? What am I even doing with my life? I can be out judging meat worth. Talent evaluation is difficult because a meat judge's competitive window is so small. Rules limit students to one season of eligibility at the <laughs> college level. I'm going to test some meat. So there's, going, I'm, I'll be back. So is there? What so this is here? all right. You get a major, mm-hmm. and it sounds like um, a collegiate competitive. Yeah. So you get like a letterman's jacket, a hide, <laughs> I would, a buckskin. <laughs> it's bleeding like, still. A leather jacket. <laughs> the fucking branded fucking. Now, Dude, now I'm assuming, I'm assuming something like that Texas. happens because I found a Sports Illustrated article about this process, about this competition. I'm so a major upset. sports publication covered the collegiate meat judging competition. Oh, that if that doesn't make you. Like you made it, you know that's that's legitimacy right that's there. What I'm kind of saying is like you know there's these small nooks and crannies of where to make it and where to do your thing, 
And your college supports it. Your local town supports mm-hmm. it. You get funding and where I we should find out where they host this because we should where, go. Next I want to go. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we I'm should saying, go next year. November third. So I'm saying like we got a couple weeks, man. We can so what I was reading shit. from right there was from SI.com. That was Sports mm-hmm. Welcome, to the, oh welcome to the world of competitive intercollegiate. You judging? Oh my God! <laughs> Recruits and rivalries, championship and iconic coaches. Oh my! Oh Who's my. the best coach? It's, it's got to be. <laughs> it's gonna be us now next year because we're gonna get in there. Well, with with the way Harbaugh's career support. is going, sounds like just another day in the Big Twelve. But this is sport. On um, it's a sport. John Unlike Gruden. John other. Gruden's gonna get his spot. <laughs> He's going to get his job back at Jesus Roger Goodell. Yeah. And, and just like go oh, there. look at this. You love this. What exactly is the high stakes world of competitive? <laughs> high stakes. <laughs> yes. Did they spell it S T E A K? They spell it high, like Stake. marijuana. Well, I was thinking the stakes part, but yeah. Oh, my God. It's like three jokes in one. Yeah. It's like baked lays. <laughs> they're missing Steven Seagal and the Power anal Rangers. Leakage, anal leakage in the baked lays. <laughs> what? So they're missing Steven Seagal and the Power Rangers. Well, the actually, joke would be complete. No, he's probably the, he, just, all the, all the uh, uh, roles he's filled, he's probably like king shit of the meat fucking quality contest. He's just there. Oh, I love yeah. that. He I is the meat they're judging. He sends it to his ponytail like, yeah, it sticks. Yeah. There's yeah, extra fat cool. in this one. This yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, we should, we should go next year. What we should do. Is we should we should pick a school that we're rooting for and like cover our, like like let's grease our like eyes with barbecue sauce. The worst school ever. Yeah, start so fantasy league would be great. But like the worst school ever. Like let's let's let uh, <laughs> let's endorse like yeah. We do well, the worst school Podunk already. Anymore. We do confidence Texas picks. Tech. So like the worst school will give you twenty points. Oh no, I want to be there. And yeah. then we're Texas Tech. We'll give you one. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. It's, I mean, it is college sports, so it's got to be graded. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. got to be rigged. There's enough regular sports. It's got to be rigged. It's college sports. Got to be rigged. No, <laughs> I guess in Texas it is rigged. Like so, that. so, what's beyond collegiate meat judging? Is there like professional meat judging? Are there, are like, are there scouts looking at these meat judgers? Well, I would. One would have to assume so. So, what is that into? Like, they're all right, Bobby. They're it's the, the big game day. Captain of the team. They're the next FDA. You're the the, FDA, the, the center FDA, lineman like meat judger. I bet for like big slaughter. for all the sausage. I bet for like big slaughter Huge operations. And shit like that. And also I mean, FDA regulations. Because you're not wrong to ask a question. I was asking that question myself, too, when you first started talking about this. And it's like, all right, what, like 80, <laughs> 89% of Mer. collegiate athletes don't go on to playing professional right. sports. Mm-hmm. And, like, but their so, sport, we, but the funny thing is their sport is what their profession. degree is. Yeah. Exactly. And 90% of them go on to be professional meat now enthusiasts. here's the thing <laughs> what we stuff. need my daddy oh, no. was a meat judge hey, I was we need to meat. call we need to call the ocho we need to so call. that they can have we, we need to put together a professional meat judging league so it's the i feel like this is all big hopes the, and that's what it is <laughs> you know. we call it we call it major league meat judging mlmj all right i like it mlmj it and we're gonna get bob costas to be our first our first analyst to skin and throw him on the fire, <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna t- we're gonna steal him away from 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 the Olympics, and we're gonna start scouting all of these events. And this is why we need to go next year, so we can we're gonna yeah. make our money by having <laughs> other men judge our meat. <laughs> that's what that's what I think it was about. Why did I come here today? <laughs> and we finished. Up we're on to that. we're on we're on to something. Jeez. We're on to something. It's the biggest <laughs> collegiate past <laughs> judging <laughs> meat. The biggest <laughs> collegiate meat judgment. Who's got the best the meat in this fraternity? <laughs> yeah, right. Come on down. Right. Yes. Oh Lord, yeah. So, I think I think this is. We need to write this one down. Yeah. And we 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 start by going next year, and after that, we're in the big times. Yeah. It's it's we're in the it's big times. yeah. So here's here's we're gonna take the South Park plan. It's gonna be. Uh, step one, steal underwear. Step two, underwear uh, <laughs> step, step two is judge meat. Step three is profit. And I okay. say khakis. Get the khakis. Get the yeah. girls. Yeah, yeah. Get the khakis. Get the girls. Get the meat. Well, cargo I think I think, if, I think no one's got a car- <laughs> hand job in cargo shorts since now. I think if it's a meat judging competition, all of the all of the all of the contestants That's need to be way. wearing gray sweatpants. I think it's just natural. <laughs> I'm wearing uh, some for right a meat now. judge. Account? Yeah, if you're yeah, a meat yeah, judge, yeah, you yeah. should be wearing gray sweatpants. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, for the ladies, for, for the, the ladies, ladies, and for not for the bread. judges. Because sometimes when you're a man, you wear stretchy pants. Let me borrow some sweats. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I mean, again, two jokes in one: baked lays, <laughs> anal leakage. <laughs> oh Lord. Right. Oh, Wait, now we're we are yeah we're gonna go off the rails here real quick. Uh, 
So, if you're watching this episode, you can get the full version of this show over on our Patreon, where for as little as a dollar a month, you get early access to all of our episodes, exclusive access to this show, and a whole bunch yep. of other goodies, like some exclusive merch, and you can contact us directly, all sorts of fun stuff. You're always in the loop. For our existing patrons who are watching this full episode, we thank you. We see you. You are wonderful, and you're why we do this in the first place. You allow us, as three friends, to hang out and just really get into the nitty-gritty of the things of the world, like meat judging. Power Rangers. Power Rangers. And the U2 spy plane, and it's all its success. Um, Steven Seagal. It's all about Steven Seagal. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Steven Seagal, if welcome. you're watching this, uh, first of all, thank Cameo you. Me. And well, how much does your cameo cost? <laughs> so... Uh, Greg, Josh. Shasti, yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks for coming out. Greg, Not I know out. this is your house, so it wasn't a far walk for you. Mm. But I appreciate it I'm anyway. Gray sweatpants. And for all those watching and listening, we see you, we hear you, we love you. Meet Judging Competition 2022. And until then, we say goodbye. <laughs>